Hello, my name is Joav Kluger. I work for Amdocs. Uh, and I'll be talking today about uh, the VCPE, residential VCPE use case uh, that's uh, delivered with Amsterdam release of ONAP. Residential VCPE, uh, so this is not a new concept, it's not a new service. Um, carers have been providing this service for, for quite some time now. Uh, some people know it as triple play service for uh, you know, voice, uh, video and uh, internet. Um, but uh, what, we, what we're doing now uh, in ONAP is we're delivering a new, uh, like a next generation of this service, which has some part in the customer premises still, in the homes, a physical box, but then another part in the cloud. And this is where ONAP really gets into the picture. The uh, Broadman form, uh, came up with uh, a relatively new specification, came out last year sometime. Uh, it's called TR317. Uh, and what it does, it, um, it defines a new uh, architecture called NERG, Network Enhanced Residential Gateway, uh, which really separates the functionality of the good old residential gateway to two parts. One part is um, the BRG, which is now called Bridged Residential Gateway. Bridged as opposed to you know, the regular router-based residential gateway, that, that is the traditional one. Uh, and um, this is a hint to that it is a simpler, much simpler box. And then the other part is called the VG, Virtual Gateway. And this is really a set of virtual functions that are instantiated in the operator's cloud. Um, and they are the ones really that, that are doing the work, the, the, the work of the residential gateway. Uh, the BRG is only doing what is absolutely necessary within the home. And then in between, since the uh, the uh, functionality is divided now between two, two parts, then uh, there needs to be uh, a dedicated uh, connection between the two, and it's called Logical Subscriber Link, or LSL. Um, there are different, different uh, technologies that can be used in order to deliver this, but the point is that uh, it is instantiated, it is put up, and then anything that is sent from the home through the BRG, put into this logical subscriber link, is guaranteed to end up in the VG and nowhere else. And nothing else that comes perhaps from another BRG would be able to get to this VG. So it's an exclusive link between these two uh, parts and what's what's really important to understand is that perhaps uh, you know many many operators even before they do any of these new things new services they're looking at redu uh, reducing costs and uh, the operational costs uh, with this um, with this new technology new network technology. Will, um, will definitely be lower because these simple boxes, you can deploy them once and then you don't have to touch them ever again, mostly because they're, they're simple, they, they do very minimal things. At the top here we see uh, ONAP and not even all of ONAP, uh, but this is just to illustrate that you know, ONAP is instantiated uh, SDNC, the SDN controller portion of ONAP, and DMAP is another one, uh, and DCAE is another one, and the, there is more, we're not showing it, the, the point is, there is ONAP there, um, and it has a, an OAM network uh, through which it can communicate with all the VNFs that it instantiates, uh, and then, okay, now what is instantiated for, uh, to support this, um, this new uh, VCPE uh, service. So the first thing that is needed is um, some, some general, very general infrastructure uh, elements 
um, such as DHCP, AAA, and DNS. Uh, and um, we instantiate them as part of the use case, but we believe that in real life it will not have to be part of it because these will already be instantiated uh, in, in, the, in the operator's cloud for all other services that need it. Uh, they might need to be configured for this service but not instantiated, but since the use case is starting from scratch, then um, the first part of, of the implementation of this use case is really to bring these up. So, so this is one. VBNG is um, something that would reside typically in some data center that is close physically to homes. There would be, of course, could be many of those. Uh, and this portion, the VG and uh, this new element that is defined in TR317, which is called VG Max, which what it really does is muxing and demuxing uh, to the uh, various uh, VGs. Um, this is usually will be in one data center and these will be in another data center. Um, and, but in any event, there is going to be a tunnel that connects this all the way here and for mainly for IP address um, saving, uh, public IP uh, address saving purposes, there is this additional element, VGMUX. So really what is done is there is one, um, one tunnel, one VXLAN tunnel that is created between the BRG and the VGMUX and another tunnel that is created just between the VGMUX and the VG and these are really in the same cloud, very close to each other, in the same neutral network actually within the cloud. And I, I've left here the uh, addresses, these addresses, and, and only because, uh, of course these are examples, they don't need to be exactly these addresses, but the point is that since there is a DHCP server here, and another DHCP server here, and of course in all the other VGs, then addresses that are used in this home, this, the same addresses can be also in this home and in any other home, and they will not be mixed because things coming from this home will always go to VG1, things coming from this home will always go to VG2. So we saw all the uh, VNFs that are needed for this, uh, for this service. Um, DHCP, AAA and DNS were easy to get in the, in the open source. So these are the ones that we're using. Um, they're they're uh, easily accessible and, and, and easily usable. So we're using those. Um, however, for, the, for these ones, which are really the data plane elements of this use case, uh, we did not have VNFs uh, because they're not yet available in the uh, industry, uh, neither uh, commercial or open source. So um, what we did, we said, okay, what we really need is something very simple there. So let's use VPP, which is Vector Packet Processing Open Source Software with some modifications that we will define and somebody will implement and indeed uh, people from Intel um, uh, picked up this um, activity and, and have uh, made all the necessary modifications to the VPP software that are needed for each of these functions. So we have four and each needed different modifications. They did them all um, and so now we have these functions as far as the VNFs, even if we had VNFs, commercial VNFs or other, it wouldn't mean that necessarily that the operators um, delivering such a service would have to use these particular VNFs. 
they can choose their own VNFs. The residential VCPE use case is one use case. But when you look into it, you see that it's actually constructed of multiple services. So we'll have actually, I think, five or six different services that together comprise this one uh, uh, VCPE use case. One service, like I said before, is the core or the general infrastructure. We call it Gen Infra Service. It consists of VDHCP, VA, AAA as the uh, VNFs connecting to this neutral network, which we call CPE signal neutral network. And in the same service, we also instantiate this VDNS with also um, another neutral network, which we call CPE public. And in real life, again, there will not be such a network because it will be the internet. Uh, and some web server. It's a service. In terms of ONAP, it's a service. And it will, uh, through heat in OpenStack, and it will instantiate this network. Service number three is the VGMAX. So this definitely will be needed also in real life. Uh, it's the VGMAX itself as a VNF, and then a network, which we call MAX Gateway Network. This is the network that when customers start uh, registering and getting service, their VGs will connect to this network. But at this point, it's only infrastructure. We don't have the VGs. We don't have any of that. But we are bringing up the VGMAX and the network that, um, that it will serve. What we're also doing in this service is we're connecting the VGMAX to the network, to this network, to the BNG MAX network that we created before. Service number four is the other side of this network, VBNG. Um, VBNG, uh, with its network, which, again, in real life, it will, it will be a physical access network connecting to homes. So, most likely, uh, operators will not have to instantiate this network. In the, in the use case, we don't have anything, so we are bringing it up as well. We're connecting the VBNG to this network, but also to this CPE signaling network, because, because when things start, um, we'll see it later, uh, the BNG needs to connect, to communicate with uh, AAA and DHCP. So it has to connect to this network. And it also needs to connect to this network because when everything is established, the tunnels, as we remember, go this way. So it needs also to connect to this network. Service number five is really a fake thing. In real life, it will be a real box. We don't have a real box, so uh, we are emulating it. So it's a, we're bringing up this BRG emulator <coughs> and we co connect it to the network that we created before in the previous service. After all the, the services, the infrastructure services have been established, now uh, the network is ready to accept requests for services. Now, say, a customer uh, goes to the portal of the operator uh, and, and requests a, a, a VCP service. So, um, what happens in real life is first it is searched if, if they have a, a box because they need to have a box for this service. If they don't have a box, then a, a, um, an order to send, to ship a box to that customer, to that home, is issued by the BSS. And this can take days or, or whatever number of, of, you know, whatever time it takes for the box to get to that home, and then for that, um, for that uh, customer to plug that box, to open, you know, the, to get it out of its box, to open it, to plug it into power, to plug it into the network. And, uh, and now the box, the, this BLG, is ready to, to start working. This can take days. So 
During that time, ONAP really doesn't know of any of this. It doesn't receive the request to instantiate the service. So it started from the, the customer logging into the portal, requesting a service, a, sh a box shipped to the customer, and now we wait. And OAP doesn't know, and the, and the BSS doesn't know. Everybody waits. Waits until what? Until they start seeing packets from this box on the network. Why? Because the customer plugged it into power, plugged it into the network, the box starts doing things. What it's really doing, the first thing that it's doing is requesting an address. So it's is it issues a, a DHCP uh, discover message that by default goes here because this is the only place it can go because this network takes anything that comes from here, takes it to VBNG. The result of this is that now uh, BSS knows that the box is there and now it can issue a request to, to ONAP, which really goes to SO, um, instantiate a service to this customer. We had uh, the box is, like we said, it's ready to, to, to work on the network. So SO gets a request from um, BSS uh, instantiate a service. What is that service? Now that service is one is the VG. VG is a cloud VNF or set of VNFs that need to be instantiated. So this is one payload. Another one and, and connectivity to the network that had been created before when we created this and also the network that was created when we instantiated VGMAX. That was the network between VGMAX and VGs. So it's a VG with two connections. That's one, <clears throat> but that's not enough. What we also need is a tunnel cross-connect to create in the VGMAX. That tunnel cross-connect will be such that when packets come from here, on the VXLAN tunnel, it will hit the right entry that will know how to encapsulate it to this VG and vice versa. So ONAP configures this tunnel cross-connect. The VGMAX itself is already there, but it until the customer service, this particular customer service is created, this tunnel cross-connect not, is not there. So this is the time at customer service creation is the time to, to configure this one tunnel cross-connect. Another customer will come in, another tunnel cross-connect entry will be configured to VGMAX. For VG to be able to send packets to the BRG over there, it will need to encapsulate it as we said, into VGMAX. This encapsulation requires that VG know what the IP address of VGMAX is because it will need to, in the, in the outer, um, outer uh, uh, frame uh, or header, uh, the destination address in this packet will be VGMAX. The, Final destination, of course, is somewhere in the home. Similarly, it has to configure the box, the physical box. This is what's done for the customer service itself. When this is all done, now, um, now packets can uh, go through from the home all the way to the internet.